Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Xa Talk Show. Welcome to another episode of Xa Talk Show. Today is 2020, July 18th, noon San Francisco time, and today is Saturday. And we are going to talk about several things about keyboards. Let me stop that. Okay, so several things about keyboards. I'm going to show you、uh, Google Keyboard, and I'm going to show you the Logitech. G six zero four mouse. Okay, and let me show you. Okay, se several things.、Uh, let me show it here. And、uh, say hi. Okay, come here, people. Come, come. You know, type, type、um, in the chat box. So we are going to. Shall we begin? So I started to.、Um, you know, I haven't been talking about keyboard for a while. Let me show you my keyboard blog. Okay, so I've been working on keyboard blog every day, of course, and we haven't been talking about it for a while. And there are a, a lot news and update.、Uh, and in the past few days, I've been updating a lot of my old pages. You know, right now I have like a few hundred、uh, pages on keyboard. Let's see article index. So you see, this is my article index. Let's see how many pages. About seven hundred. Pages on keyboard, mouse, input devices, and so on. And let's go back. Okay, so let's go back and let's go to my keyboard blog. And in the past few days, I've been up updating lots of old pages.、Uh, let me show you some of them. Okay,、uh, you know I've been writing a lot about keyboards. That some of these are old pages. Let me show you. I'm just going to show some of them because most of these are not interesting、uh, things, and I haven't been. I actually don't have it. Hey yo, so so you guys, so I'm alive, right? I'm alive and well. So we have Eric Gonzalez, Gonzalez. Hello, and Jagan. Hello, Jagan,、uh, the Lisp expert, and, and Channing Stephan. I haven't seen you before. First time. Great. Welcome. So I'm gonna talk about keyboards, and yeah, let's start. Okay, so I've been updating lots of these old pages. You know, these are not great pages. Mostly, I just read Amazon reviews about them. So this one is Logitech G703 mouse. I do not recommend. You know, if you want to see what I recommend, just go to the mouse section. You know, mouse section, and I have categorized what I do recommend, and.、Uh, What is my judgment? What is my principle? Basically, I've written it out here. I tell you、uh, which mouse I prefer, and I'm not a gamer in the modern sense,、uh, in, in the sense that I don't play modern, you know, 3D games and so on. But I'm a, a big nerd, gaming nerd. My mouse recommendations are mostly for programmers or heavy, heavy computer users, browsers,、uh, uh, programmers, Photoshop, and you know that kind of thing. Okay, hold on a second. Let me. There's some issues with the. Okay, so yeah, so. So let me just quickly go over. So these are some of the old pages. Not interesting. I'm going to show you, show you interesting things. Okay.、Uh, oh, this this page is interesting. You know. We have so many diverse devices. For example, we have so many different mouses, mouse and trackball and pen.、Uh, you know, as you have seen, wait, so many different shape and、uh, of mouse. You know, the weird shape, five buttons, twelve buttons, twenty buttons, and you know, a joystick on a mouse, and <laughs> and this one, and ergonomic mouse, and also this contour roller bar. Then there's this space navigator. Then we have the drawing tablet, of course. So all these devices, and also a、uh, trackball. You know, a trackball is even more diverse. You know,、uh, thumb-operated trackball versus you know finger-operated tra trackball, and different trackball size. And some of them has a, a ring、uh, for square wheel.、Uh, fascinating. So all these devices and pen tablet and touch screen and so on and also things like these, they 
you know, you want to know so which one is the most efficient. You know, gamer, gamers talk about it all the time. Like some some say some claim that trackball is actually the preferred in instrument to play <laughs> first person shooters. You know, the diverse ideas. So let's put it to scientific test. You know, and that the way to do that one of the ways via this game also. I've actually never played it. But I've surveyed, you know, I collected information on this page about also players, their video. For example, this guy is a weird guy. He uses a trackball to play also and very good, you know, beats most of us, I guess, if you haven't played it before. He used a trackball, so you can watch this video. You can see on the corner of the screen, he's using these uh, uh, stupid YouTube ads. Okay, you know, he's using the mouse, I mean the trackball, to play also. So we have trackball users, then we have pen tablet, you know, drawing tablet users, uh, which you can buy cheap. And then you have touch screen uh, users, you know, this is obviously the most efficient for this game. <laughs> but however, you see, you cannot do this with uh, first person shooters because the very nature of touching, you know, that, that doesn't work in first person shooters. Then you have trackpad, you know, operation. Then you have, uh, uh, you know, game controller uh, like such as uh, PS3 controller. Then you have mouse, so you can actually. So this is a kind of a scientific way. Then then you have the pen tablet, the you know, scientific way to determine which device is actually the most efficient uh, with respect to get to the point as fast as possible, and 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 you know, clicking and and dragging and so on. So that's an interesting page. Okay, so uh, let me get on to the main topic today we want to talk about. So these are some of the old devices. Uh, for example, this Nostromo was a, a product from Belkin. And then about uh, five years ago, seven years ago, Razer bought it. So Razer bought it, slapped on their logo. Razer is a bad company. You know, I don't recommend Razer product at all because Razer, they 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 actually um this is what i think okay i don't know if it's actually uh i haven't really tried to verify it they you know they 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 want to force you to in use the cloud you know so called cloud that is other people their computers store all your customization in their uh cloud so you need to you need to install their software intrusive software you know into your computer then you need to register a account then you need to, you know, customize your keys and store that information in their computer. So just why? Because that way they, they have data about you. They can sell it. They make more money. And and they market it as, you know, oh, the greatest, the latest technology cloud where you can have different profiles depending on what games you are on. That's all kind of bullshit because, you know, gamers are in general ignorant. So they bought into that. So actually in this way, they actually save memory. You know, they don't have to have internal memory as much as anymore because they it's all cloud. So it requires to, you, you to have internet constantly, and they constantly monitor what app you are launching, when you launch it, things like that. So I do not recommend Razer product at all. So especially they have this uh, uh, Razer Orb Weaver. This is the worst device. You know, you are forced. So so, so don't buy Razer. Okay. So again, some of the other uh, old pages, Razer Black Widow, this is also no good comparatively. You know, if you are a gamer, you might, you might think, oh, this is the greatest. No, there are much better ones. So anyway, I want to talk about, uh, okay, this one, this OB, OB Touch is a special, special input device. Oh, my friend's dog. Coco, come here. Coco, shut up. Coco. Go, go, shut up. Okay, let me show you my dog, okay? Am I doing okay? Okay, we're gonna start to talk about Google keyboards. How long has I been talking already? Let's see. Google, okay, 10 minutes, 11, not so bad. We're gonna start to talk about Google keyboards and, and uh, uh, hold on a second. This is my 
my friend's dog. Okay, can you see it? Good morning, Alan. Good morning, Elkook and uh, yeah. Daniel and, uh, and okay. So I'm going to show you close that. This is another old page close that. Yeah, interesting devices. So this one is the uh, 3D Space Navigator. It's a in, it has an interesting history. Let's see. Am I still on? Um, it has an interesting history. Let me show you. Okay, so normally the device it looks like this. Okay, well not here. So where is it? Let me go to it. So Space Navigator 3D. This is the um, common version. Okay, so it basically it's just like a joystick, but you can also push it down and pull it up and twist it, and that's it you know it's basically just like a joystick you can pu pull up push down or twist it uh, I don't think that's that's uh, you know I don't think it's that great but many 3d modeling software users such as blender Alan uses uh, might like it you know and this is also great for Google Earth if you pre like you know to play with Google Earth this is a great device and uh, this is the history of that device it was in the beginning, it actually was developed or used at NASA. You know the space, um, you know the the space organization. They use this. Um, it looks like that 3D connection, <clears throat> but eventually the boys becomes redundant. They just become uh, a knob. So actually, let me see if I can find. I have another page of history about it somewhere showing. Um, showing a even a older device let me show you okay since these are interesting so you go to trackball history uh, trackball history trackball controller uh, I forgot where that is actually not trackball history uh, trackball controller no uh, mouse history actually Anyway, somewhere on my page, I forgot where. I want to talk about, let's go back to talk about the interesting things, okay? This mouse we're going to talk about and Google keyboard. Yes, let's let's do Google keyboard. Let's see. So, am I doing okay? So, great. Uh Xas streaming task say idiotic <laughs> okay the proper time to say idiocy is about these normal PC keyboards these are all idiotic you know this especially the 40% plank the happy hacking this one this one is the most expensive $350 happy hacking keyboard it just came out about three months ago this is the most idiotic keyboard possible <laughs> okay, and 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 uh, well, let, let's go back to our topic because otherwise it's gonna be endless. We're gonna talk about this keyboard. Okay, I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you. Let's see if I can show you my keyboard. Now I don't want to show some. Okay, so here is Google keyboard. You see, this is fantastic. Let me let me let me let me explain. Okay, so this keyboard doesn't have a case. I mean, you you buy it, you can either do it yourself or you can uh, buy it pre-built. This is like the full pre-built. Actually, they also have a version that comes with a case and pre pre-built. So um, you buy it and you build it. Uh, you know, you can build it yourself, do it yourself, or you you buy the complete one. So that that's it. You, you know, it's very simple. That that's all. There it is. So you got you know the connections between these two. Then you have the USB cable. You know, connecting to the USB. So Google keyboard. The guy is um, actually he gave it to me for review. 
So I'm going to plug it in, okay? Let me plug, plug it in so I can actually show you typing on it. And I come to love it, but, but however, there are several major problems, okay, with this keyboard. And let's show. Okay, now, now I'm going to show you some typing on, on uh, with this. Let's go back. Okay, and so now you see the keyboard, and now you I go to the screen. Um, this is gonna be a bit hard. Let's see, I'm holding it with my mouse. Uh, okay, <laughs> this is gonna be a problem. Let's see if I can do it. Ah, this is pretty bad. But I, anyway, I'm gonna just show you. So this is my right hand. This is not good. Okay, so Emacs. I mean Emacs. Look at my Emacs screen. Okay, so now, now, wait. Magnify, magnify, magnify. Oops. Cancel. Uh, let's magnify one more time. So now, I'm typing on the Google keyboard and uh, this is actually a 40 percent wait percent 40 percent keyboard one problem shall we say is that 40 percent keyboard um, well basically you have a problem when you want to type symbols so if you want to type symbols such as the percentage sign or number, there is no direct key on the keyboard for it because you see there is only three rows. You know, you know. For example, I put my hand on the um, on the home row. There are only three rows. There's no numbers. So if you want to uh, enter numbers, you have to hit one of these modifiers, or if you want to hit uh, symbol keys such as percentage sign, uh, dollar sign, and so on. Okay, this my uh, let me adjust this so you actually see more of me. So okay, so so what what do I want to talk about it? So um, forty percent keyboard. So I'm going to go over. Okay, I'm gonna tell you all about this Google. So I have a video demo actually. It doesn't play in in Firefox. Uh, keyboard blog. Okay. Google. Okay. Uh, open in Chrome. Open link in Chrome. It'll play. So you go to my website, you'll see the video. So here is a video of actually this guy. This guy actually types on it, so well, I just showed you a typing demo. So he is a great guy. He sent sent me one for review, um, and then then you have Google Heavy, which is come with a box um, case. Okay, the layout. So th there is a default layout. Okay, now the default layout, is, in my opinion, is not optimal. I mean, it's pretty good, but you know, for those for those of us who are very into uh, key mappings and you know we want the utmost efficiency for Emacs users or Vim users or whatever you do, you usually want your own uh, layout. So I have actually created a layout. I designed it. You know, spent uh, a week after you know the first version, then second version, came out with this layout, and I'm really uh, really happy with it. With this layout. I find that I can efficient, efficiently operate on this keyboard and I really love it. So this is a 40% keyboard. I never liked the concept of 40% keyboards. Uh, but, uh, but I think it's okay um, for me to use it. No, I wouldn't say 
long term, I mean, I wouldn't say for becoming my main board. I be, because, well, because not because forty percent, because there are several issues with Google. Okay, I'll tell you about it in a moment. There are several issues, but I wouldn't mind. You know, I enjoy using this forty percent keyboard, even including typing symbols. You know, one of the most uh, great thing I discovered is that the embedded, you know, square shaped square shaped number layout look at look at here over here so you see this is uh, extremely uh, uh, efficient to type as uh, instead of you know the typical top row numbers so the square numbers you do want that that's far more easier um, and faster so anyway so I could you know uh, I if you use any type of uh, GMK software you know any kind of a DM do it yourself keyboard I recommend you, such as ergo docs okay I recommend you give my layout a try you know try something similar with my layout because I th <laughs> I think it's pretty efficient you, you know I think it's very good uh, the layout you know the design of the layout it's a it's kind of a big science now first of all there's a letter layout you know the layout you know for example QWERTY uh, Vorak I'm using and some people you know Alan uh, you know some uh, Alan uses QWERTY but he <laughs> he doesn't believe in QWERTY he used I mean he used Vorak but he went back to QWERTY sometimes you know some of you use Comac such as Emily uh, do, uh, and and some of you use you know m many other type of layout those are letter layout okay I mean the arrangement of letters now letter layout is one thing but when you use a 40% uh, keyboard there are something more significant that is the shortcut layout for example where do you place your windows key where do you place old key or command key you know uh, or the control key where do you place them you know the, the, there's a big science which which way you know which way is more efficient or whether should it be toggle key or should it be you know a normal modifier like hold it down press some other key uh, leave you know, leave off and leave and leave the modifier. You know, it it could either be a toggle or it could be a one-time shift or it could be a standard modifier. You know, there are many ways. So and the their position. So this is a great science um, of key mapping that have not been studied much. For example, you go to an online website, you will see tons of uh, pages about layout QWERTY versus Vorac versus Comac which one is more efficient yeah but we are over that you know, let me show you the layout okay so layout so here's a page about layout all kind of layout you know so you have QWERTY you have Vorac you have programmers Vorac you know I'm, I'm sure many of you are familiar you have Comac then you have uh, Comac DH you have Workman you have Asset and so on so these are all letter uh, layouts and tons of people you know we have nerds we already studied it to death I mean but the more interesting thing is the modify the shortcuts layout so I have lots of uh, pages that talks about this aspect keyboard shortcut design you know the shortcut layout such as in Emacs or Vim which command should should be bound to what key you know that's that's shortcut layout or uh, Photoshop Photoshop you have hundred uh, hundreds of shortcuts where do you should you place them things like that but but with a do-it-yourself keyboard you you have even more issue because on a normal PC keyboard you know the Windows key alt control they are kind of fixed at most the nerds will say oh you should put control on the caps lock position that's that's all they say nothing else no 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 new idea no thinking but on the on, on new keyboards such as Google keyboard or Ergo Docs or you know, you have much more variety. I mean, for example, on the Google, should should the control key be on the traditional caps lock position, or should it be one of the thumb? You know, which should it be, or should it be a toggle, or should it be what you know? And also, for example, if you look at all entirety of all possible shortcuts keys that comes in Windows 10, for example there are about 50 or maybe 100 you know we're talking about uh, operating system shortcuts then there's a question you know should you know sh so so normally you have windows key control key and uh, the old key 
right? And they you know, on, on Windows, each one have a specific specific uses and shortcuts with them. But if you are going to redesign the entire thing, you know, it's an open question. Like for example, sh should you actually have three modifiers or is three too many? You know, maybe you should two is enough. You know, so the other modifier is a extra key spot you can use for something else, such as a function key or extra function key. You know, so there's a, and and should you use key sequences such as you know alt, uh, alt, e, c. That is, you know, for example, you know, key sequences versus modifier. So 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 there's a lot a huge unexplored area about shortcut key binding layout uh, okay so so anyway so on the ergo keyboard I mean on the uh, Google keyboard I have designed my own kind of so you might uh, you might try to use it and this layout is also uh, optimized for softly keys I'm using if you are an Emacs user softly keys for example right now I'm typing on ergo key uh, Google keyboard okay I, I, I continuously rambled a lot is there any questions so far how good how how can you program on one of these then? Um, what do you mean? So let me show you. Okay, so the Google keyboard, you know, it uses this. Um, okay, I, I guess Jagan, you are uh, you are not. Uh, are you into keyboard community? Because uh, okay, so if you are uh, using one of these do-it-yourself keyboard, one of the most popular software is this QMK okay QMK is uh, uh, the most powerful or, or almost the most powerful software it's open source for controlling uh, key maps and uh, uh, layout and shortcut layout you know it basically any aspect of keyboard so and there are many novel concepts that doesn't exist that doesn't exist in gaming keyboards for example you go buy the most ex expensive Logitech gaming keyboard or or, or cool, Cooler Master or Razer, their programmability is actually much more inferior than than the QMK. Because, for example, let me tell you an example. You have you on on the QMK keyboard, you could have you could have a, a single a sing, single use shift key. For example, normally what the way you press shift key is you hold it down, press a letter, release the letter, then release a shift. Okay, that's a standard. But you could have a single press shift key. That that's kind of like a sticky key in operating system feature where you you press the shift key, um, release it. You don't have to hold it. Release it. Then the next letter key is gonna be shifted. So so that's a single use shift. Uh, and you you could also have single use modifier, you know, such as control. So anyway, so that's and and these are built in firmware. You know, you use the you use the QMK to set the key into the memory on your keyboard. So that so QMK is a great uh, software. I wouldn't say it's the greatest because I know there's a keyboard I/O, for example, this keyboard. Keyboard I/O. Uh, wait, not here. Uh, Keyboard I/O they have their own version of keyboard software, which is also the greatest. I, I okay, so yeah, th th their version is also open source. I believe it's called Kaleido. Okay, it's on GitHub. Kaleido. Uh, so this is kind of in competition, in, in a sense, in competition with QMK. Their software I know because I know the guy who who wrote the Kaleido software, at least in part. You know he. He, he, he helped so so that is also the greatest uh, uh, key binding uh, software uh, versus QMK and also I, let me also tell you that there is this one okay there is this one ultimate hacking keyboard which I have uh, you have seen it before I've showed it a few times let me see if I can show it so let me show you again. Okay, so let me show you. So you see, I have my Kinesis, and this is this is ultimate hacking keyboard. Right now, I'm using it as a keypad. You see, <laughs> pad two. I'm using it as a macro keypad. You know, all shortcuts here. For example, this key is switched to last window. For example, let me press it. You see, one key press instead of 
you know, holding Alt Tab. You know, Alt Tab is no good. You and then you have to wait and watch which one window you want. You know, this is one single key press. And let me show you. For example, these two keys. This is uh, next window, previous window. You see. And for example, I go here. This key, close it. I want to reopen it. Reopen last. You see, oh, actually, you are not seeing the, oh, actually, shit. Uh, yeah, so actually, you, 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 you missed my windows. So anyway, this is a, a switch to last window. And, and OK, and, and go back to browser. And this is the previous window, pre previous tab, next tab, and so on. I have so many uh, shortcuts. So let me get back to Okay, so I've been talking a lot. So, um, so let me answer the questions. Okay, so Google keyboard, we are uh, talking nonstop. This I haven't finished the review yet. Let me let me finish the review about Google. I mean, some criticisms Google keyboard. So I showed you my layout, and I told you about the QMK great great software. And I was going to say the ultimate hacking keyboard. They also have the greatest. Uh, the most easy to use and the most powerful software I showed it before. Let me show you uh, here. U U UHK agent, the most easy to use. Far more, you know, in terms of ease to use, it's far more better, a magnitude better than QMK. QMK is actually hard to use because you have to go to their website, then you have to do something on the website, then you have to download a. a the firmware you just generated then you have to download the firmware upgrader you know the flasher then you have to you know uh, put the firmware into your keyboard that's tedious you have to be a nerd you know you have to study QMK <laughs> carefully on the other hand if you buy the ultimate hacking keyboard you come with this software the most the most intuitive you don't have to read you know and the most powerful as as I would I would even claim as you know as powerful or even better than QMK. But anyway, I'm giving you several uh, right now three examples of the most the greatest uh, software for uh, key mapping and firmware. So one of them is QMK. This is most popular for 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 you open source fans. Okay, QMK, and then Ultima Hacking Keyboard is a great is open. By the way, it's also open source on their website. Okay, I have links. To, oh, I have links to it. Then the other great uh, software is the uh, Kaleidoscope, I, I believe, from the Keyboard IO. Okay, also open source. So three of these, these three are the greatest uh, software uh, for keyboard for writing to keyboard firmware. OK, so let's go back to Google. Let me finish up talking about Google. So Google, um, we talked about my layout. Then we talk about, OK, so I want, I want to show you. There, there are some flaws of Google, which can be fixed, OK? Problem of Google, OK, let me show you. OK, so let me see what comments you guys have. Comments, OK, comment questions. I'm, gonna, I'm going to read it. Okay, so yeah, comment and questions. Okay, comment right now because I'm going to read it soon. So I'm going to show you Google. What are the problems? Okay, um, so you see these key caps are all flat. They are not, uh, you know, the top. You know, it's all flat. This is no good. One of the problem I often have is that I don't know. You know, sometimes my fingers are on the top row. Sometimes are one column left to the left. You know, and I type, and it's a mistake. So there is no, uh, you know, homing tit. You know, they, you know, there's a little thing on the key. There's none here. So it's all flat. So this is no good. Make, not make sure you want to, um, you want to, you you want to have keys with spherical top. Let me show you. Okay, so you go to. Um, you go to key history. Uh, let me show you. No, you go to key design, and you go to keyboard profile. So, so you can see here are various keyboard profiles. 
Okay, let me put this back. Oh God, so many, so 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 I'm so busy talking and and uh, I want to keyboard profiles. Okay, so you look at so these are some of the de designs of keyboard profiles, and one of them, the most simple one, is is that. Let me show you here. Uh, is like this. Every key looks exactly the same, identical. But anyway, you see some of the keys they have what's called spherical top. So those little dent are actually important, you know, because when your fingers are on the keys, you can you can know you can know you you can feel you are at the center of the key. Whereas if you are using this flat gurgle, you don't know by feel, you know, whether you are in the center. So it's easy to move, you know, it's easy to place your finger at the wrong uh, column or key. So so one of the things I think it, you need to do to fix Gurgle is that you want to get a keycap. Uh, where is it? Let's go back to Gurgle. You want to get uh, a keycap that's, uh, that's a spherical top, okay? Uh, yeah, then then you want to get you know spherical top like this guy actually I think he's this guy you see you see you want to get a keycap with a spherical top and then you want to have a uh, you know homing guide for uh, for J and F on the J so so that you can you can without looking you can put your fingers on the right position those are critical because oftentimes I, I put my fingers in the wrong column it's hard to feel them so that's one thing. Then, then the gurgle doesn't have a case. You see, at the bottom, it's just the PCB. That's no good because you put this. This is super light. Okay, it's tiny. You put it in a bag. They hitch. You know, they hitch your cloth, and it's prone to damage. You see all these. Uh, you see this USB uh, plug. It's prone to prone to damage. You see, very fragile. So you do want a case. Um, so if you buy Google, I recommend you actually seriously consider that. Also, the the one I have is 50 grams. Okay. Now let me talk about the switch. The Google keyboard, the switch here you see is called uh, Chalk from China, from Kyle. Okay, Kyle Chalk key switch. They are very good. They are very low profile. You know. Um, let's see if I can press press it. You see. I don't know if you can see it, but low profile and and linear, which is good. But uh, it's 50 grams. The one I got is 50 grams. Fifth, you don't want 50 grams, especially for 40 percent keyboard, because 40 percent keyboard means that you have to press modifiers all the time. You know the thumbs modifiers all the time. So you want you want a light um, you want a a light key switch. So I would recommend, you know, 40 grams or less. You know, this guy, <laughs> they are crazy. They, actually, they have key, they have key switches that's only like 12 grams, I think. Only 12 grams. So it's feather light. So you, like you can actually blow it <laughs> and to make it activate. So he's talking about, you know, how great 12 grams are, which I don't know. I haven't used yet. You know, the lightest I've used is just 40 grams Cherry MX Red. So, but I'm going to. I think he's going to send me a uh, a, a a Google Play Plex. Well, let me show you Google Plex. You know, you go to his website. Okay, go to his website. G Boards. That's his company. He's in Canada. So he sell. So here is a new model Google Plex. It's you know it's even less keys you know it cuts down two rows it's like 12, 18 key less than go Google so he's um, so I think he's going to send me Google Plex and uh, with a key switch that's much lighter I, I forgot which you know, thirty grams or something so I'm going to tell you I'm going to do a review and tell you how that feels so so you don't want fifty grams okay if you go you get anything like Google you want uh, you 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 want a lighter switch, so be sure to choose you know on his website choose uh, something less than forty grams, less than fifty grams. So that's it, my review. So Google keyboard, forty percent, and with my layout, I think it's it's fantastic. Okay, and uh, then you do want a case, 
definitely you you need a case to cover it then you 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 want a uh, keycaps that's spherical top and you want um, you want a homing key on the J and F and you want a uh, less than 50 grams key uh, resistance 40 gram is good 40 grams or less okay that's what I have to say about Google keyboard okay I'm going to uh, read the comments and review okay so I actually talked for a very long actually 41 minutes uh, I need to do review of my other things I haven't done yet okay so questions okay so questions um, how can you program on one of these? Okay, so Sa, when you want to customize shortcuts, assuming quality standard 100%, how do you know which key would be most comfortable ergonomic? Do you have recommendations? Uh, okay, uh, yeah, I have a I have an answer on that question. So this question came from Joe Joe Danino. Okay, so you go to my website. Okay, you go to my just search for Xali keyboard. Okay. Then you go to uh, you go to key binding. Okay, so on this section, let me magnify. On this section, it's all about the science and art of key binding. How to choose which keys go where. Okay. Now, uh, yeah, key binding. Uh, notice, like I said before, it's different from letter layout. So you have QWERTY, VORAC, Those are letter layout. Then you have a key binding layout. That's an entirely different thing because the it's more complex. So on this page, you go to um, you go to this. I believe here. Okay, let me see. Uh, yeah. So you you go to here, Emacs versus Vim compute compute key binding efficiency. Now on this page, I tell you how do you determine which sort of key binding is more efficient I, I give you an outline and this this issue is actually fairly complex because it in order to actually optimize it you have to do linear programming which is a you know computer science if you know what I mean there's a topic there's a subject called linear programming you can go to Wikipedia and read about it so it's actually very complex it's much more complex than trying to compute which letter layout is the most optimal so anyway you have the key binding okay so so I'll go to key binding go to this page compute key binding efficiency I give you a guide uh, about how how do you actually determine uh, which key binding is more efficient for example for example let's say a QWERTY layout on a normal PC keyboard is control T more efficient or is it uh, for example F F8 let's say the F8 key you know on one hand F8 is further away but it's all but it's one single key press you know you just move your hand one single key press on the other hand control T you know it's you know you have to press control depending you have to hold down control and press T but it's you don't have to move your hand so much but which one is more efficient so that's a question you have to determine and also it depends on your keyboard for example if I'm using gurgle then control key is obviously some somewhere on my thumb so it's easier but on a normal standard PC keyboard it's on a corner it's hard to press so you have to use the palm technique or maybe you you mapped to the uh, caps lock in that case it's easier but then you are abusing your pinky you you might get pinky problems so there are a lot of issues but anyway I give you an outline in this page um, you know I'm talking about which one is more efficient okay so that I hope that answers that question does that make sense uh, Joe Jordanino now let me drink my energy drink actually I have a um, kind of jamba juice here so Nubukuku says what is a keyboard called that was in the thumbnail before the stream went live okay that is this Google keyboard wait, wait no oh, oh oh no that's that's um wait I know what you're talking about actually I should I'm going to change the thumbnail to Google 
but the one you are talking about, let me show you. That's 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 this one. Okay, it's a do-it-yourself keyboard from China. I have it here somewhere. Okay, here. Okay, let me magnify. There. So it's just a random keyboard on um, on on a Chinese website. Someone created it with full details on how they designed it and stuff. And by the way, this volume wheel uh, is becoming popular among do-it-yourself community. We begin to see quite a few of it. And volume wheel, by the way, let me tell you, what volume, volume wheel, the knob or wheel kind of thing is a great feature on keyboard. You do want that, OK? So I have a page that's a survey of all, all kind of volume volume wheel designs. For example, this is uh, Dash 4, and this is common in Logitech. And then you have the Dell, which is also, you know, this type of knob is common in stereo, you know. Then you have this flat disk design. Uh, you know, the, so you have also a design, you know, you, you actually you do want a volume wheel. Volume, I talked about this before. Volume wheel is great for many type of control. For example, sound volume sound level up and down that you want that because that is the most efficient way uh, to control to, to increase and decrease for example you can you can uh, control in uh, very in in very uh, fine precision how fast you want to the volume to go up or down in physical because you can it, it how fast it goes up depends on how you how fast you twist the wheel as opposed to on a typical keyboard, you have the buttons, you know, buttons for increasing volume. For example, on the Mac keyboard, stupid Apple Mac keyboard, you know, you press the button to increase the volume. That's no good because then you have to, you have to repeat it. And sometimes you, if you hold it down, it overshoots, then you have to, you know, revert. that's no good. So volume wheel, it's not just for sound. It's also for uh, controlling any type of motion, for example, scrolling. Uh, mouse wheel, for example, scrolling, you can find it, fine tune exactly how much you want, you know, and also you can control the speed, you know, so you want a volume wheel. I talked about this, and also for uh, things like tab, okay, for example, okay, I'm, I'm going to show you, okay, for, for example, tab. Tab is also one of the things you want a volume wheel too. Uh, for example, I could, if I wanted to, to, con to, um, to set my mouse wheel to 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 uh, switch the tabs. Right now, you are seeing. You see, I'm using a shortcut. You know, previous tab, next tab. You know. But if you have a volume wheel, especially clicky one, you know, like click, click, clicky one, you, it's it's actually most efficient. So ideally. Uh, for a power station, you actually do want several volume wheels. You want <laughs> you want four or five volume wheels. One is for previous tab, next tab, another wheel, clicky wheel for uh, next window, previous window. Okay, another wheel for cursor forward, backward, another wheel for cursor forward, backward by word. Okay, when when you are doing a lot of editing, so <laughs> actually you want four or five volume wheels. And some of them you want to be clicky type. Some of them you want to be spin. For example, I showed you the Logitech spin wheel. There's a video on my website you can see. Um, let me go to a long page so you can see. Are you seeing my? OK, here. So let me go to, OK, so you see, uh, wait. So right now it's clicky. I don't want clicky. I press this button, now it's spin, OK? You see, you see how it's spin. You so so for some kind of command you want it to spin. For some kind of command, the optimal physical wheel is a, a clicky wheel. So actually, I talked a lot. There actually there are several topics we haven't. Uh, I wanted to talk about, but we we we. So today it's all about keyboards. We talked about a lot about keyboard issues, keyboarding issues, and uh, um, so let's see what you guys saying. Okay, so what's the next? Any uh, more questions? Type it right now. Is a good time. Okay, let me have a sip of my power drink. 
what do you think of speech based text input okay that is pretty good as that is good of if the content of your typing is speech oriented for example talk for example right now talking or talking to your mom or chat that's good but speech speech based input as of a t as of today is not so good if you are going to write poetry or if you're going to write uh, technical documentation or if you are going to program you know to do programming because the current technology of speech recognition is you know machine learning based basically based on statistics so they they have lots of data that's oriented towards common speech for example good morning goodbye how are you doing today if i say that you know google google knows on youtube you go to youtube they, you know you click on you know show show um caption you know you 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 show what i'm talking about but it's not so good for programming if you are going to program they don't understand what you are you know doing so yeah but however there are people who I have a video I mean I have a page you know search for Xali search for Xali Emacs using voice to type faster than keyboard okay there, there are people who did that uh, let me show you okay uh, okay so so new page wait what am I doing okay so yeah so search for Xali using voice type faster okay something like that using voice to code faster than keyboard so there's this guy this is five years ago seven years ago he actually created a system a voice recognition system that is designed for programming so when you watch his video he, he do things like uh, ba, ka, uh, i, uh, uh, di, da, for, ba, you know things like that he utter these chirps to control you know to tell the computer move the cursor backward one word or forward one word to beginning of line uh, insert parentheses insert you know brackets and insert a for loop you know things like that so he very efficient so but this system is not common yet you know you you know what i mean by common is what's available on iphone on google you know you know siri okay google you know those are already there but if you want to use this you have to buy for example he's he's actually using you have to buy the dragon uh voice software then you have to do lots of customizations. You have to be a nerd Any, anyway. So you go uh, read that article, you can see. Um, so next question. Thank you, Chris. I wonder if you have any personal preferences yourself. I'm familiar, familiar with your pages about computing personal efficiency. OK, what do you mean by personal preferences? About key binding, about uh, shortcut layout design? Yeah, of course, I have my uh, opinions. I have, for example, if you are an Emac user, you might try my uh, my system, Xafly Keys. Okay, you, you know that that is my that is my uh, result of my like fifteen years of study on key binding and experimenting on key binding. So Xafly Keys, it's for Emacs. Um, you know, you might try it. Try it. It's a model it's a model like Vim but the key choices is based on frequency of the command and ease of finger positions so that's stuff like keys I have a tutorial on there uh, okay so that's about that and of course otherwise outside of my uh, I mean I have tons of shortcuts but but that's another topic because you know I'm gonna talk about that for one hour but basically in the past few years I started to uh, let me tell you guys okay so I recommend I highly recommend that you buy a keyboard uh, let me show you okay you buy a keyboard that um, you buy a programmable keyboard with onboard memory okay so I have a list here so this is a, a bunch of programmable keyboards with onboard memory. I recommend them. 
you know, if you like ergonomic ones or there is a PC, you know, one piece PC flat ones. So you, you want a keyboard with onboard memory, programmable one. So in, in the past three years, I started to exclusively always use a programmable keyboard. Because before that, before that, I used the operating, operating system to remap keys. For example, on the Mac, you have, you have uh, for example, let me show you my articles. You go to software. On the Mac, you typically use you use Carabiner elements. Okay, this is the most powerful um, operating system based key remap software. Okay, on Windows, on Windows you use Auto Hotkey. Okay, that's the most powerful key remap software on Windows. And on the Mac, on the, on Linux, you have a bunch of crap. Okay, you have X mode map. You have quite a few others. Uh, I have I have you know ten ten twenty articles tutorials on them you know what they do uh, how to do them how to remap keys how to make your uh, control to caps lock things like that yeah uh, you know so these are operating system based key remapping software and they are no good they are inferior because they always always have glitches and they always have issues for example for example on Windows for example the Windows L key for locking a window. That key, you cannot reprogram it with any of these software. You cannot reprogram it unless you actually dive deep. You, be, you know, I'm not going to go into details. In a, and similarly, on the Mac, for example, on the Mac, there are certain keys you cannot rebind. For, for example, um, um, there, there are certain keys you cannot rebind with the Mac's uh, system-wide um, uh, um, key binding um, system. For example, let me show you. Okay, there's Cairo binders. There's also, um, uh, you know, there are many ways. Okay, I'm not going to go into them today about you know because it's a different topic. But but what I'm saying, go back to what I'm saying. I'm saying is that f for the past five years, I started to rely exclusively on programmable keyboard you want to program the firmware you don't want the keyboard to send a signal to your operating system then another layer in operating system tries to change that key to something else because there's always problems okay so but just just spend just go put down two hundred dollars three hundred dollars for a programmable keyboard okay so that's that and go go to my website and use uh, you know buy it for me for my Amazon links okay <laughs> Uh, okay, that's it for today. I, I I talked about quite a lot of things. Okay. Uh, also, X mode map requires X org. Exactly. That's one of the problem. You know, glitches with these software based um, key remapping software. You know, on Linux, you can use X mode map to remap software, but that only works if you are running in X eleven. So sometimes when you boot to, you know, you, if you boot to a single user mod or boot screen, you need to change your disk con configuration or something. Then all of a sudden, your key doesn't work anymore because, you know, you, you were used to X mode, map, X mode map under X11. But one day, you, you know, your key stopped working and you, oh my God, I realized, oh, I was because I was using X mode map. Uh, then you have to start to look at your keys, you know. Always, this is glitches like that. Same thing with the auto hard key. And also, another advantage of keyboard firmware, you know, programmable keyboard, is that you take the keyboard anywhere to your work, to your friend's place, plug it in, doesn't matter what operating system, Mac or Windows, it works. Okay. On the other hand, if you use, you know, the operating system based way, you take you, you bought a new computer or you take it to work you have to you have to spend hours to reconfigure you know on the on that uh, computer to install software or whatever you know so 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 no good okay act actually uh how long have we been talking one hour i think okay it's one hour so that's that's a long one so uh, three more minutes, okay, guys. I'm gonna wrap up. Three more minutes. 
so this mouse we haven't talked about today I'll do it next time I have it here I was going to tell you you know I, I was going to give you a review but in short I record I highly recommend it okay I do recommend this one uh, and I was going to talk about that you know I wanted to talk about several things okay let me show let me see uh, where are we so gurgle keyboard we talked about fully and many related issues typing tutorial okay uh, let's skip that QMK okay my tutorial about QMK uh, then okay one last thing okay let me show you so I discover this keyboard this is the best okay <laughs> this one if you are you know one of those who wants a PC keyboard you know you don't want split keyboard you don't touch type or something you don't want ergonomic keyboard you think they are weird you think they are expensive you know you, you, you just want a normal PC keyboard okay then I recommend this one okay this from this actually is from China Apple maker that's the brand name and this model name is Nice Plume okay you just go to my website Xali uh, keyboard needs room you go to my website read my review uh, I think this is a one of the greatest uh, you know one of the greatest um, model you know for 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 those of you who are just who wants a flat PC, PC keyboard they have several models by the way they have so that you you know you have the full uh, sized one or you have the you know 10 keyless uh, compact ones anyway why is it so great I you know because many reasons first of all it's programmable okay in comparison to other for example among keyboard nerds you know they like happy hacking keyboard uh, for, I, I have all of them shown here uh, actually here you know among keyboard nerds you you like happy hacking or you like Fioco or you like real force or uh, you like you know Leopold you know for example here's uh, real force here's a Leopold and here's happy hacking they are very expensive they are like two hundred dollars three hundred dollars <laughs> and but they 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 are crap okay they are crap in my opinion they are the worst ship extremely pro uh, expensive and not programmable imagine not programmable no onboard memory but these nerds you know they, they just like this happy hacking and Leopold and you know and real force you know these are the classic high quality keyboards even in two year 2000s because you know beginning around year third uh, 2013 the mechanical keyboard became popular you know then we started to have lots of gaming keyboards that's mechanical then people started to talk about mechanical keyboards everyone is on the train you know but these Leopold Reinforce they are the classic very expensive high quality ones they talk about keycaps uh, you know and top and topper you know key switches anyway so these are the classic greatest keyboards that the keyboard nerds admire especially especially the happy hacking but but they are no good okay in terms of f functionality that's the that's what I'm concerned about the most functionality efficiency operational efficiency and functionality pure functionality I don't care about looks I don't care you know many nerds they talk about whether you can twist the keyboard you know they like to twist it they like to, you know they like thick keycaps the crap you know they, and they, they like heavy you know many of these nerds when they do keyboard review they will say oh this is heavy this is great <laughs> you don't want heavy you know look at space you know look at the spaceships you you, you want you want material science you want the a, a material that is the hardest possible and also the lightest possible that's science okay you don't want heavy you know many for example they, I, I, I show you many of the nerds they they custom build c c certain Apple you know keyboard that's the whole thing is metal like it weigh, weighs five kilograms L literally let me show you um, literally <laughs> let me sh let me show you okay keyboards history um, uh, we we go to yeah we go to normal keyboards 
then we go to Apple keyboards let's say Apple keyboard history okay then you have this one okay this Macintosh uh, M0110 this is you know one of the classic many of the keyboard nerds admire okay they spend few hundred dollars to buy to buy this keyboard then th there is this extreme keyboard nerds who creates a, a duplicate now this one the entire thing is made of metal okay it, it weights uh, literally like a brick brick okay I, I know because this this photo is mine wait this photo is not mine but I went to the uh, keyboard meetup so I actually seen it you know <laughs> I actually seen it <laughs> somewhat you know they make this they three kilograms this thing weights three kilograms and these nerds just love it okay I, not that's not for me so I, I care about efficiency you know operational efficiency and also the mapping the shortcut mapping and so on you know what is the utmost efficient the least finger movements possible things like that many of these issues uh, these traditional keyboard nerds they don't consider at all it's like outside of their thinking for example you go to uh, geek hack geekhack.org is the classic keyboard uh, nerds forum and also then there's a desk authority just search for desk authority it's like one word they made up you know that those those websites are the keyboard nerds they go to they talk about they talk talk about electronics of keyboards you know the Arduino chips or whatever the soldiering the 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 key cap technology you know what kind of plastic the key switch technology they 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 are into that okay they you know in depth you know they are nerds you know they talk about that in depth but but, but you see these people they they usually there are certain aspects about keyboards that they never ever look into such as key binding efficiency you will you, you will never see see them talk about it you know the, the, the concept doesn't exist in their mind you know also you talk to the Emacs people the Vim people they, they, they every day they'll tell you oh Emacs is great oh Vim is great oh Modo this that that but they never actually spend 10 minutes to think about the issue what what, what issue issue the scientific measurement of shortcut mapping which way is more efficient you know things like that I think about you know uh, anyway uh, so what was the question I was uh, digressing into um, okay X mode map okay uh, intimate didiotic people he thinks one one okay mission complete okay that's it for today well wow, 17 people still watching how long I've been talking 108 okay we don't we don't mind we don't mind talking for long long videos okay as long as, as we are doing good um, yes I think that's it for today um, okay summary okay go to my website if you are in USA you buy from Amazon buy from my website that's so I'm going to see uh, wait go back uh, what are we what am I going to talk about okay so so yeah I was talking about this uh, nice plume okay I think this is a great one uh, okay that's it that's it for today thank you guys for watching subscribe buy my tutorials Emacs tutorials and JavaScript in depth and uh, bye guys and join discord okay fantastic people <laughs> okay join discord study discord let's see let me go close the goodbye take care